Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 26. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So on the first of every month, you know we like to provide an update. It's not only on Bitcoin, but it's on the entire asset class for cryptocurrency to look at the overall market capitalization of the entire asset class and compare it to what we would consider to be our fair value logarithmic regression curve, okay? So coming in today, August 1st of 2022, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at a somewhat modest 1.08 trillion. However, the fair value of the asset class, according to this regression line, which as we know is a monotonically increasing function, so every month it will continue to slowly go higher, is now 1.75 trillion. Now, because the actual market cap is well below the, the, the market cap that the fair value says that we are, it means that the asset class as of now is undervalued by approximately 38%. Now, in the same way that we were overvalued for quite some time, we can be undervalued for a while as well. And again, remember, this is not just Bitcoin. This is the entire asset class. And some people might look at this and say, well, it looks like the Bitcoin chart. It's not, right? It really is. It really is the entire asset class. It is not just Bitcoin. And so the purpose of this chart is to help us better identify periods of overvaluation and undervaluation, meaning there are certain periods during market cycles, during Bitcoin's market cycles, where fear takes over and we go way more undervalued than we realistically should. But in the same way, in bull markets, we can go way more overvalued than we realistically should. Despite the fact that it, there does seem to be some overarching trend line here that sort of just slowly goes up with time, as investors, we can't help ourselves. And in bull markets, we tend to press it higher or push it higher. And in bear markets, it can, it can go lower, uh, much lower than what the fair value would be considered to be, okay? So, uh, again, we are currently sitting undervalued by about 38%. And, and one of the things is, is to look at these prior cycles and to look at, you know, the first three cycles, we had fair, three fairly clear, um, observable major blow off tops. And, and this cycle uh, was a bit different, right? We had two sort of more intermediate peaks that didn't take us all the way back up to the top. Obviously, a lot of that is, of course, due to um, a lot of macroeconomic conditions as well. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, when they turn off the money printer, as they say, right, don't fight the Fed. And you guys know that during these long bearish periods, it can, it can just be sort of blind accumulation, especially for your blue chip cryptocurrencies. Okay. Now there always are going to be some altcoins that you might look at and say, well, it's 80% down or it's 90% down. Therefore it's a great time to buy. I will warn you, there are always altcoins that do trend to, or that will just eventually go to zero. Not all of them, of course. And you guys know, I, I like a few altcoins as well, but for the most part, you have to be careful with them and make sure you pick out ones that you really do think will stand the test of time, not just something that was shilled to you on Reddit that week, okay? Now, one of the things that we like to do is we like to take the percent difference between the actual market capitalization of the asset class and the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, which I will remind you again in this video, and this is an important thing to remember, it is a monotonically increasing function. That means it never goes down, right? It, it only will go up with time, meaning that if the price of the entire asset class, if the market capitalization of the asset class were to stay the same for a year, it would actually mean that we're becoming more and more undervalued as a function of time because our reference point is still going higher, okay? It's sort of like if you if you look at where we were in late 2018, it was lower than where we were in 2020. However, even though it was lower, the undervaluation in 2020 was much lower uh, than it was in 2018. And the undervaluation in 2020 was more similar to the undervaluation that we saw in 2015, 2016. Okay, now to compare where we currently are, when you take the percent difference between these two curves, you'll see that we're currently coming in at, again, about 38% undervalued, meaning we're below that 100% um, that trend, that 100% line. Again, it shifted by 100%, so 100% just means it's at the fair value. So if I go back, if the white market capitalization curve here, whenever it crosses the red line, that means it's crossing the red line over here, okay? So, 
uh, you can see that we're all the way down here at around 38% undervalued. We do know if history is any indication that we can go all the way down to about 65% undervalued in a bear market. That doesn't necessarily mean that Bitcoin has to go down that much, but it could be some combination of Bitcoin and altcoins. It could also just mean that we have to wait a while for us to become technically undervalued or more undervalued where, than where we are today, just because our reference point is going to continue trickling higher. Again, later, you know, later on, the fair value will be two trillion, and so if we're still sitting at around one trillion market cap, that means we're undervalued by fifty percent, even if the entire asset class market cap hasn't actually changed. Okay, so that's sort of the, one of the things you, you should notice when going through these bear markets is that the reference point will continuously change because we assume, or at least I assume, that the asset class does trend higher with time. Now, right now, we are currently, again, 38% undervalued. If you look at um, these major peaks, you can see we did not make it all the way up to the top of it this time. However, we have come back down into that undervaluation region, and, and we're sort of just continuing to... Um, you know, I, I think from uh, any practical sense, you could argue that, you know, we're, we're sort of at the beginning phases of, of, of this area right here. It doesn't mean we can't go up, doesn't mean we can't go down, but we're sort of in this long, boring period, um, probably for at least a while longer before we'll actually have a realistic chance to um, have a bull run to take out new all-time highs. So just something to consider. Um, I know a lot of people are constantly wondering, you know, is this it? Is this the move? But I think that, you know, as long as you have a strategy in place, you just continue on with that strategy, uh, you know, weekly, monthly, whatever it might be, and then eventually we'll, we'll go back up. Um, but it could, I mean, it could take some quite some time. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, you know, give you false hope and just look at prior times when we come down in this region. It, it tends to take a while before we actually muster up the enough liquidity to, to make a sustained move higher. So, you know, going back to this, this chart, um, the overall market cap chart, one of the things to look at as well is to what would it take us to get back down to the lower green dashed line? Well, I think as of now, it would mean that the asset class would have to go back down to around 500 to 600 billion, which would mean a 50% correction. Or to get there, we would have to go sideways from here until the middle of 2023. So for instance, if the asset class just stays at 1 trillion, uh, for another year, then by that point, we will be hitting that lower regression band. Or if we go down to it quicker, it would mean going down to around 500 to 600 billion market capitalization. Okay. Also, we also look like to look at, or at least I like to look at, at, you know, when realistically could we get to 10 trillion? You know, when we started this series back in 2019, the speculation that I always had back then was that it would take at least until 2023, right? Um, the earliest it could happen would have been in, in late 2022. However, under the current market conditions and, and uh, landscape that we're currently experiencing right now, I don't really see that happening, uh, 10 trillion happening this year or next year. I think we we're, it's gonna take a bit longer. We need to um, get back into more favorable market or macroeconomic conditions, meaning hopefully one day, the, one day the Fed will pivot when inflation is under control. Hopefully they don't pivot too soon because if they pivot too soon and inflation is still kind of running rampant, um, while you might like the idea of the Fed pivoting, sky high inflation is not going to lead to anything good. Um, so that's where we currently stand. Uh, again, the goal, the goal for me sort of as a, as a macro outlook for the entire asset class uh, is to eventually get to that $10 trillion milestone, plus or minus a few trillion, right? As we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends? Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye.